This is Ernest Shackleton. He was an English-Irish explorer famed for his expeditions to the Antarctic in the early 20th century. He established the record for coming closest to the South Pole just about four years before Roald Amundsen reached it in 1911. Shackleton then decided to take a crew to make the first land crossing of Antarctica, intending to land on one side of the continent to the south of South America and then crossing over on land to the other side of Antarctica, which is accessible from Australia. The crew set out on a state-of-the-art ship designed to withstand polar ice pressure called the Endurance. However, just as the Endurance reached Weddell Sea at Antarctica, the bay where they were supposed to land, they were covered by ice crushing in from all sides, far away from land, in the middle of the Southern Hemisphere winter. What followed this ordeal was one of the most daring exploits of human survival on the ice for two years, during which the ship sank without ever getting its crew to Antarctica in 1915. 107 years later, a multidisciplinary team of researchers searching for the wreck of the Endurance for two weeks finally stumbled across it under the icy cold waters of the Weddell Sea. Surprisingly, the ship is quite well preserved without much damage to wood, unlike nearly every other shipwreck ever found. The discovery of the shipwreck has been caught on camera with video and lots of images. It was found last Saturday on the 100th anniversary of Shackleton's funeral after a two-week search of the area. The discovery was made using underwater hybrid search vehicles. The discovery of endurance is something of a cause for celebration and a milestone in history because the state of the wreck reveals so much and the process that went behind it gave scientists tremendous amounts of data, including tons and tons of climate change data that was acquired during the search for the shipwreck. The ship will not be removed from water and it cannot be touched as it is protected as a historic site and monument under the Antarctic Treaty of 1959. It was discovered by submersible vehicles that had cameras equipped and that is how it will continue to be surveyed and studied. This research crew, the one that discovered the ship, composed of people from multiple countries and they operated the saber-tooth submersible that was made by Saab aboard the South African icebreaker vessel SA Agulhas II. There have been searches for the endurance before but hunting for it has been challenging owing to the deep and thick ice in the area. However, the extent of Antarctic ice has been steadily and drastically going down in the recent years with rising global temperatures. February of this year, in fact, saw the lowest levels of ice in the last half century and it's only expected to get worse in the future. In this instance, it made access to the shipwreck easier, quite ironic considering the ship sunk from being crushed by overbearing ice for a year. The remains of the endurance are surprisingly well preserved, said the International Interdisciplinary Team, with very less deterioration of wood when compared to other wrecks that are underwater. This is primarily because of the kind of animals that live in these waters and attach themselves to the ship. When we see images of shipwrecks, both real and imaginary in art, we think of things like treasure chests and octopuses living in the ruins and broken bits of wood lying everywhere. But this ship looked like it had just sunk a few days earlier instead of a hundred years ago. The wood that had been buried in water for a century was not damaged because the life that had attached itself to the ship did not consume wood. The life in Antarctic waters is different from life elsewhere because this area around the South Pole is not wooded. There is no thick vegetation, there are no forests and there just is no wood. So there are no creatures here that feed on wood. All the life forms that had attached themselves to the wreck are filter feeders, being able to absorb nutrients directly from the waters here that bring in nutrients from many other parts of the world. How the endurance got here and what happened to the people on board has made the ship one of the most legendary vessels in modern history. In 2003, Time magazine described the journey of the crew of endurance as the most storied epic of survival. The Endurance set sail from Britain in August of 1914, led by Shackleton and a crew of 27 other men. 
Previously, Shackleton had almost reached the South Pole, but he and his crew had to turn back because of frostbite. And then in 1911, Amundsen conquered the South Pole. Shackleton then decided that the record that he was going to set was crossing Antarctica on foot. So he planned the famous expedition known as the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition, of which Endurance was a part. The ship Endurance was supposed to go into Weddell Sea, landing at Vassal Bay. Meanwhile, there was another ship called Aurora that was to dock on the opposite end of the continent at McMurdo Sound in Ross Sea. It also had 28 men. Shackleton's party was supposed to land and take six men and 69 dogs and go from where they landed all the way to the other end of the continent, meeting the crew of Aurora after 3,000 kilometers on land, making a journey on sleds. There were, of course, very obvious risks. Explorers at the time knew that the Weddell Sea was notorious for becoming covered with ice and no one had ventured into Antarctica before, so it was completely uncharted. But even then, no one anticipated just how bad things would get. As tensions were building up in Europe in 1914, Shackleton set sail in August from England and reached the Weddell Sea in December. In early December, which is technically summer at the South Pole, they started to see the first signs of ice. Through December and January, the ship trudged through ice. It was the titanic of polar vessels at the time. It was specially reinforced to withstand pressure from crushing ice. And there could not have been a better ship with a better hull to get stuck in where they did for them to survive. By the end of January, it had become pretty clear that the ship was caught in ice and was completely stuck. The whole thing was drifting in the sea as a huge mass along with giant blocks of ice. Every other day, there were attempts to rescue the ship. The men would chip away whenever the ice melted a little bit and whenever there was a little opening and a pool formed. But it was never enough to get the ship free. Ultimately, the ship was completely ice-bound, so the crew stopped their attempts to try to free the ship and just waited for the ice to melt naturally by springtime. Of course, this never happened. Through March and April and May, the ship just drifted with the ice in the Weddell Sea, barely 150 kilometers from land from Antarctica, in peak winter with no sunlight. By May, the crew realized that winter was there, they weren't going anywhere, so they stayed in the ship and waited. By August, ice started to damage the ship by crushing in on it from all sides. Pressure waves from compression of ice all around would hit the ship and jolt it around in the water, even raising it up and propping it up at an angle. By September, there were some signs of ice receding and increased sunlight, but the loose bits of ice that had melted were violently attacking the ship from all sides and finally started to cause structural damage. Finally, in October of 1915, over a year after they set sail, for the first time, the ship was fully just in water and the ice had melted away enough. That's when the crew realized that there were leaks in the ship and water was filling in. And once again, instantly by mid-October, ice started to close in again on the ship. Once again, pieces of ice propped up the ship, listing it and tilting it at various angles. And this went on and on through October with the ice melting and freezing and constantly hurting the ship. Finally, once again, the large-scale summer melt set loose giant pieces of fast-moving ice, among which the ship was trapped. As the ice cracked up, Bits of it kept smashing into the ship, causing it to move around in the water and also to get stuck. At the end of October 1915, the ship had suffered enough damage for Shackleton to realize that it could not be saved and the crew abandoned ship. They camped on the sea ice that was floating all around them, salvaging whatever they could from the ship. On the 21st of November, finally, the ship was dealt its fatal blow. A pressure wave lifted the ship straight up and the floating bits of ice moved away. It was then afloat fully in water for the first time in a year and then a minute later was fully underwater. Now the men had to fight for survival. They were in the middle of Antarctic sea ice in November and had to get to land, all 28 of them. 
So before setting off on their journey, the crew had to make one of those unfortunate decisions that people make when survival is hard and shot all of their weakest and smallest animals, including the ship's cat and a puppy. They took three lifeboats with them and started to slowly make their way north towards the coast of South America. The ship sank in November and it was only by February that the crew could finally see land. They spotted the Elephant Island, a very remote island near Antarctica. But the sea ice they were trekking on was broken, so they could not reach the island. As a result, they used their lifeboats in very dangerous conditions to get to Elephant Island and they finally reached in the middle of April of 1916. But this island was remote and no one ever came here. There was no chance of rescue, so the crew had to move. But many among them were weak and sick and had been ill. So a crew of six, including Shackleton, repurposed one lifeboat and then set sail to the South Georgia Island that was over 1300 kilometers away. They reached the island a month later, almost dying in the process. Through the months of May, June and July, Shackleton had been working with the local people and local governments to get the rest of his crew rescued from Elephant Island. There were multiple trips that were attempted to Elephant Island to get back to the crew. And finally, on the 30th of August of 1916, the entire crew of 28 was together again, now with the rest of the human civilization and with absolutely no idea of the war that was raging in their homelands. On the other side, the Aurora didn't have much luck either. The ship left Australia in December of 1914, reaching Antarctica in January. A series of unfortunate incidents on the ice left the very inexperienced crew quite battered and three members died. The ship also became stuck in ice and the entire party remained stranded in these waters until April of 1916. The surviving crew of Aurora met Shackleton in New Zealand in 1917 and the journey of the crew of Endurance became a legend almost immediately. Over a century later, the ship was finally discovered by the crew of Endurance 22, the expedition that set out to search for it, belonging to the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust. The discovery of this shipwreck finally brought to a conclusion the enduring saga of the Endurance.